looks good. Ready? Yes. So, to what extent is Dirty Clean a collaboration? And to what extent is this really your individual vision? Um, <clears throat> Dirty Clean is a collaboration in that it is, it is a band that has a, a defined sound and as, as a duo we each contribute half of the sound. But music aside, in terms of the, the concept and, and the way that you've talked about it and how it's been influenced by other artists, is that more of your vision? The, the music in terms of the songwriting for this particular project has, has kind of been birthed from my own insane obsessions and interests. Well, talk about the name of this project, Dirty Clean. What, what is the relationship between the music that you're producing and the, and the name of the, the, the group? Um, at first, it, it started as just a catchy name. And we didn't really think much outside of that. Uh, but the more that our sound has evolved over the last couple of years, it's taken on a life of its own. And I think it is a very, um, very appropriate title for our brand of music because there is a roughness to it, as I'd said. There is a <clears throat> rawness to the live element of the drums. But there's also a polish, I like to believe at least, to some of the melodies and to the sound of the songs themselves. Um, so there's a balance, I think, there between this, this striving for uh, cleanliness in, in sound and shape, and at the same time allowing chaos to occur whenever it seems appropriate. Well, the thing that strikes me when you hear the music and you see the art that, that's been produced for it, um, there, there are these binaries. There's black and white, and there's a, a two-piece group where you've got drums and, and keyboards. And then I was thinking, is Dirty Clean another part of a kind of a binary thinking that's behind this? I think that looking back on the project, that that makes perfect sense. And for myself, looking at some of the artwork now and seeing how all the pieces have come into place, it, it does seem like there is a very binary uh, quality to everything. It wasn't so much predetermined, I don't think, as as it was serendipitous. Well, people hear a lot about the music business these days, and there's so much despair, sometimes from people that are old. <laughs> but I think it's true that the album certainly doesn't have the place that it did um, a decade or two ago, but yet you've chosen this moment to conceive of and to write this work as an album. Why is this the right time for this particular record? Well, I don't think that the album has died in any way. I think that it's found different forms and different shapes. I think albums will always have a special place in music lovers' hearts because it's it's like a novel versus a short story. It's um, there, There's a depth to a good album that you don't get out of a good EP or a good single. And there are little nooks and crannies in, in a lot of my favorite albums that I love revisiting time and again and getting lost in. And I think that now more than ever, perhaps, there there's a need for that. Because in the digital age, the age of um, mass media outlets and internet and readily available information about any subject imaginable, uh, there needs to be a place for mystery to exist, and there needs to be a place for um, for creative forces to take shape of their own and not be compressed into, you know, a small, easily digestible format. So it sounds like you, you did write it as an album, is that correct? Or did you have a few songs that suddenly became an album with a theme? Or what was the, the, the process of creating it? It did originate as an album, um, and part of that was was preconceived that I wanted to write an album. It was something that I'd, I've always wanted to do as a musician, and this seemed the the right opportunity with the inspiration that I had at the time. Um, and then part of it just 
to a place with, okay, I've written three songs, now I've written another song, now I've written five songs, and eventually you have enough that you can call it an album. I think some of it is definitely setting the task up to be completed in terms of any creative effort. You have to have a goal in terms of what you want to achieve and what your output wants to be, whether you're sitting down and <clears throat> writing something or sitting down and, and recording something or sitting down and making a film, uh, you, you have a goal in mind of, of what you want it to look like at the end of the day. And then at a certain point you have to also let it take its own shape and doesn't always line up with what you originally had in mind. But once again, this is one of those things where it just was serendipitous. Everything fell into place the way I, I had imagined originally and there were some pleasant surprises along the way. So it came together fairly quickly? took about three months to write the songs. For a lot of artists, it's difficult to let go of a project. Was there a point when you realized, this, this album is finished, or was that a struggle for you? Well, I had so many songs written, and I, I reached a point where I didn't feel like writing anymore for this particular project. And so I think that was the point where I decided that it was finished in terms of the raw materials that went into it, um, but it was really polished as a piece during the recording, okay. and the material that we had, which was nine songs, um, was honed, fine-tuned, production values were added, uh, and sequencing was toyed around with, um, so it took a more definitive shape after that, just as, once again, in any creative endeavor, it goes through an evolution of phases. Um, so that was the next phase in, in determining what the substance would be. Um, but no, I didn't really have, have a hard time letting it be in terms of the songs that were there. At a certain point, for me, it either feels right or it doesn't, and it felt right. And, and so yeah, I was able. Go. Yeah. You've described the record as a, a love letter to the German filmmaker Fassbinder. Yes. Um, I know that you're someone that admires his films, um, but can you talk more about the connection as you see it between this music and, and Fassbinder's work in, in general? Musically speaking, I was listening to a lot of the same artists that. I knew Fassbender to be a fan of from the inclusions in his soundtracks to his films mm. as well as interviews I'd read with him. Uh, and by no means do I claim to have utmost knowledge of, of every artist or musical recording that he was keen on. Um, it was more just that feeling you get when you, you have a kindred spirit and you find that someone else has is gravitating and drawn towards the similar influences that you yourself are, uh, such as Roxy Music, Kraftwerk, uh, the Radioactivity album in particular, and uh, Scott Walker and the Walker Brothers. Um, and these were all elements that that seemed appropriate for the kind of music I had in mind to create. I wouldn't say that the music is an extension of those particular recordings, or that it's particularly derivative of them. If, if someone were expecting Roxy music and they listened to our record, I think they would be horribly disappointed. Um, but that's the funny thing about creative efforts and endeavors, is that you have a certain set of inspirations and influences that go into the making of it, and then what winds up coming out is typically very different from what went into it. And I don't know that everyone who is a fan of Velton Draht is going to respond to the music in the same way that I respond to it. Uh, but I think that's part of the beauty of, of creative inspiration and the cyclical dimensions of creative forces that everyone takes something different away from it. And I want to stay open to that. So is it fair to say there's an emotional connection that you have to Fassbender's work that, that is sort of played out in, in the way this music uh, was written and, and recorded? Yeah, it definitely came from, uh, like any creative process, I suppose, it came from a 
passion from an obsession. Um, I think creativity without passion or without obsession is useless in many regards. Um, because you can only have so much thought put into something and get by without having any feeling. For me, the, the works of art I respond to are mostly things that, that strike that balance between intellectualism and pure feeling. And there are many writers who intellectually I don't agree with hardly at all, same with many filmmakers that <clears throat> I have very differing opinions with, but I, I respond to their feeling. And at the end of the day, I think that that is one of the most important elements to a work of art, that the feel be genuine.